Hello everyone, Christopher Beast here, and in today's video I'm going to be talking about a new update to the Signalis multiplayer mod that has recently come out, and really what the overall status is on the multiplayer mod's testing, and as always, our plans moving forward. For those who aren't aware, the Signalis multiplayer mod is as it is named. It is going to be a mod that allows you to play co-op with a bunch of other friends and get through the events of Signalis with a buddy. We do have plans in the future for other things, like maybe Horde mode or PvP, but uh, I think a good way to explain our overall plans should be let's get the basics done first and then we can talk about all that extra stuff. Um, and this video is going to be primarily about talking about what progress we've made on those basics. So with no further delay, let's just get right into it. <laughs> First things first, uh, for those who have been kind of following along on this thing's development, it may or may not have been a month since I last uh, checked in on you all. There's a lot of reasons for this massive delay, but a lot of it has really been to the difficulty of kind of rebuilding the structure. I mentioned in the last video that there was a plan to move us from the functional program that the entire thing is written in to a more object-oriented programming. And for those who don't know programming languages, just know it, it, it's a lot of work to pull that off. That didn't happen. And what that has done is made several systems that were meant to be replaced very difficult to work with. And it basically means to do anything with them, we have to do some sort of rewrite. And that's kind of why it's taken over a month to get an update. But now that an update's here, I kind of wanted to make it something substantial if I was going to wait this long for an update. Um, I don't exactly want to show up, you know, after being gone three weeks and be like, okay, the only thing we got to our name right now is that we kind of rewrote some of the debugging. I don't think that's fair to y'all, and I don't think that's accurate as to how much work is being put into uh, this product. So I pivoted the team a little bit to focus more on testing and, and really getting something that's a working product out. And that's going to be kind of the goal moving forward, working products. It, it might run my shite under the cover. But I do think if we can get something that works from beginning to end, then we can go back to the beginning and talk about making it run better. So in that regard, what have we done? Well, the first thing is the build works. Uh, this has been kind of a running joke with these builds that we've been kind of running into a constant loop where we send them out and there's not really anything for you to test because it's all been testing pre. Um, and, and most of the time it doesn't even work. Nine out of 10 times we have to work with you to get it to work. This build is functional all the way through the first act of the game. The Boolean handlers work, meaning you and your, your teammate or your friend or your co-mate all now have the working Boolean functions that we intended. This means if you grab that duct tape in that room, your teammate should be aware of it. And if you grab the, the, um, the photograph, same, same as that. If you open the cryopod, same as that. You also should be able to now go into the penhole scene which is the second scene in the game after the penrose and not crash which is at least a decent bit of step four uh, another funny little thing that we've decided to add is there's a cut content bathroom in the penrose um, i wasn't aware of it until uh, the other day actually and we decided to just be funny to add that in as a nice little like easter egg um, and it will be on if you are connected to someone else if you're not connected and it'll be off. So it's a funny little way if you're sitting in a lot, you've opened the server and you're sitting for your friend to connect, funny little way to watch and see if they have. But those things aside, what is the meaning of this? Well, it does mean that we now have a build that you can sit down, you can grab a friend, and you can show them that this project isn't exactly just a bunch of words on a page or somebody on a, some YouTuber claiming that we're building something. We have something that works now. It doesn't get us very far. We're not exactly into the full game yet. No, we're not maybe even into, we're maybe 20 minutes into an eight hour playthrough. But it's a massive step forward as a, as a sign that we're finally getting something stable. That we're finally getting something playable. We're finally getting something you can actually look at. Um, and that's when we get into the dialogue of this video about what's next. So kind of the big uh, headache at the moment is we're, we're currently facing a crash bug um, going from Penhole to uh, LOV, which is going to be the next major scene we are trying to tackle. Uh, LOV has a lot of moving parts, and getting the crashes handled such that they do not, like, you know, violent and crash uh, into LOV is going to be one of the, the major goals. The other goal really is going to be to get LOV done on a much faster speed than we got Penhole. It is a bit of a, a travesty that it took us almost 
I think it's almost six months now to get um, the pen roasting completely done. We now have the systems. We have the Boolean handlers. We have the code. We understand how this stuff works. We understand what doesn't work. We understand how to build connections and how to maintain those connections and how to handle the messages. We know how to do it. So in theory, we should be able to apply that theory um, and really get LOV done in, in a term of one to two weeks, hopefully. I mean, worst case scenario, three to four, uh, and not months, uh, which if that can happen, if we can get LOV done, if we can get um, some complicated systems like the enemy handler done, then we can open dialogue on, hey, maybe we can expand the team, maybe we can grab some more coders to quickly hammer out the rest of the bullion handler, or maybe we can have some, you know, take a side tangent, maybe one week we add in a horde mode. Um, but that is, at least the hope, is we are going to be able to start making more steady progress rather than what's kind of been the dialogue of we take one step forward, but we kind of are forced to take three steps back because of the complexity and disregard of the code. And I think the maintenance. So that's really all I got to say about our progress. There's there's not a lot to, well, there's a lot to talk about it from a programmer stance. Uh, there's a lot of celebration going on in the team right now in regards to what we've accomplished, definitely. But um, I understand as, as y'all, it isn't exactly easy to understand why we'd be celebrating. And I, ho I hope we are able to give y'all more substantial things to celebrate. We appreciate y'all's uh, uh, patience on this project, and we are excited to bring forth uh, the Signalis Multiplayer project in all of its glory as soon as we can. Thank you all for waiting. Uh, thank you all for your time. This has been Chris Beast, and I hope to see you all next time.